This is what makes music fly. Did you recognize this cube? Well done if you did, because it wasn't particularly easy when you take away the melody. I believe that the secret to these big, sweeping, soaring moments you find all over music just like this very much lies in the background textures that you barely even hear. The moment you start to pay closer attention to the secondary parts, the more you start to realize how important they are when it comes to delivering the right message. We only really have two chords, E minor and C major, and the melody is very simple as well. It's basically an arpeggio of the two chords, but what I find most surprising is the very basic rhythm. This is all to say that nothing about this music is very impressive or interesting, yet when we bring in the orchestra, it just sounds glorious. And this is all thanks to the great power of orchestration. Of course, and this is a no brainer, the simple fact of having the music being played by an orchestra is going to make it much more interesting. But if we wanna do something just like this, we first have to understand what it is about this music that makes us feel the way we do. Simply choosing some instruments for the lead and some for the accompaniment in most cases is not going to cut it and that I can easily demonstrate. What you're hearing now is a stripped down version of what I played before. We have the melody played by strings and accompanied by trombones. This is fine, in my opinion, but it's a little bit stale, just like the piano version I played before. Sometimes having just the bare foundational elements doesn't deliver the message the music is meant to, and that's when we start creating parts to do just that. This is what we normally call textures, and specific to this piece, it would be a combination of different techniques, like sustains on trombones and faster tongued articulations. Something as simple as creating a couple of moving parts gives the music a whole new dimension with very little effort. And when you combine everything together, that's when the music starts to fly. In this specific case, melody and harmony has very little to do with the way this music makes us feel. You could pretty much do anything, and as long as the orchestration suggests some forward momentum, the music should hopefully be able to evoke a similar mood. So let's have a look at some more examples. When you clicked on this video, you probably thought I was gonna be talking about this famous score. This is just amazing, I agree, and if you don't think so, you're banned from the channel. But you'll find that apart from being a very different piece, melodically and harmonically, of course, much of what we already talked about still applies here, as Williams pretty much reuses the same instruments in the same roles. Starting with chords on trombones. French horns and oboes, double tongues. woodwind runs and arpeggios. Obviously, this is once again very different harmonically, but it works within the context of the movie. While this something like the previous example would not uh, have fit quite as well, even if it may suggest a similar mood. But what about the rest of the cue? How do you keep up the momentum when you want to extend the cue for a longer period of time? The piece Fly to Neverland from the movie Hook is a masterclass at that. You see that Williams keeps refreshing the orchestration every few bars by switching instrument roles. We start with pretty much the same formula, strings on the lead, horns, fast articulations, and woodwind runs. As the section terminates, shorts get passed on to the trumpets, just so that horns can take over the lead. And the next version is once again very different, with the lead back on the strings, wind staccato, and the trio on piano. This goes on for quite a while with a lot of you know, really smart orchestrations that keep changing and evolving throughout the piece. It's really quite impressive, and if you're not familiar with the piece, you should really check it out in full. But that's how Williams does it. And of course, you know, same guy is going to approach, you know, flying in a similar kind of way. But what about other composers? You'd be surprised to find out how remarkably similar they approach the same music. I'm just going to show you a couple of examples. Here's a cue from the first Toy Story movie. This has pretty much exactly the same orchestration as the other examples we've examined so far. 
So strings on the lead, shorts on horns, sustains on trombones, and so on. What about something else entirely? Obviously, harmonically, it's very different, yeah? But interestingly, this also does something similar. There's just more focus on the short, you know, repetitions on brass. And that's because there really isn't a melody here. The most different approach I found is probably this cue from the movie How to Train Your Dragon, where it seems to me that Powell likes a more subtle sense of motion than anything else we've heard today. In fact, if we closely inspect what he does, we can see that in the background we still have the horns, but they now have a softer articulation and they're also doubled by strings. This of course gives a very different feel to the music, but we can still find a version of the fast, repeated, tongued parts we had before. We have it now in woodwinds and percussion, even if it's not quite the same as what we heard in the other cues. By the way, I've got a video where I recreate this piece bit by bit. You should check that out if you haven't already. Also, I shared the files on my Patreon alongside more stuff just like this, including some of the examples you saw in today's video. So to sum it up, what makes music fly? We said harmony and melody doesn't seem to be massively important as long as you don't do something crazy that doesn't fit at all. You know, hopefully anything should work. Most music was major but it won't necessarily mean that it's gonna be appropriate in all situations. Using different instrument families and articulations or techniques to create a moving texture. And finally, keep up the momentum by reassigning parts or creating different parts for different instruments in order to keep the orchestration fresh. That's everything for today. Special thanks to my patrons, of course, who make these videos possible. You can sign up now if you like and get a bunch of cool rewards in return, like the files of this video, for example. Additionally, if you wanna learn more about composing in the style of classic film scores, like some of the things we played today, I made a course just for that links below. I hope you enjoyed the video, hit the like button if you did and subscribe if you're new. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you on the next one.